Okay, exactly what is it? Judge, before Mr. Schachter took the podium and testified before this court, I wanted to, as the record should reflect, that both Mr. Marcus and Mr. Sass looked at the statement prior to the reading. And so their implicit adoption of what he was saying, of his improper arguments, was improper to this court. And the court should adjust that. Okay, but what you are doing right now is highlighting something and making more of a spectacle. So if your office, in general, does not want to facilitate or incite violence, then we need to just sit down and move on. That's it. There were 18 witnesses, 16 or 18 witnesses that testified today. There was nothing that was said until Ms. McNeil made her point made. And, you know, we're moving on. But is the court going to do anything about maybe stopping it from happening again? When these people are upset about specific things that have gone on from that table, like shooting the middle finger up at this court and laughing and joking, Ms. McNeil, be quiet. When these people have sat in this courtroom and watched this behavior from that table and they want to say that they're not happy about it, what is the problem? Judge, I have no problem because I have thick skin. But once you bring in my children, I think that's highly improper. I didn't even know you have children. I don't know what you're talking about. Your children? What about your children? You obviously have a very high tolerance for murder. God knows what you're showing your kids on television. You obviously have no conscience. If you don't think that this is the worst of the worst, how could you sit there listening to what he did and say this is not the worst of the worst? He hunted down innocent children and staff, terrified, then tortured them, blew their heads apart like a water balloon, and enjoyed it. That doesn't make it on your worst of the worst murderers list. You make me sick. Another person the defense brought up many times to get the jury to vote for life in prison is Scarlett Lewis, the mother of Sandy Hook victim Jesse Lewis. The defense mentioned several people who supposedly love him, one that wanted to make money off of him through producing a movie about his life, and the other wanted to make money by selling her social-emotional learning product. During the trial, we learned that Scarlett Lewis calls the murderer and tells him that she loves him. I hope she knows that after she hangs up that phone, he's laughing at her. He then goes and draws 666 on his cell wall with his hemorrhoid blood and draws pictures of guns and writes how he would like to kill more people and murder more people. Her naivete shows that she is a fool. She should know better after her son was murdered in Sandy Hook. I'm sure she's not watched the trial. But if she did, she would know that his mother loved him very much. He didn't have an abusive home life. There are children out there being tortured and raped and don't receive any love. But this was not the case. The Parkland murderer did have love in his life. He even had a girlfriend. But you can't fix evil. It is such a disservice to people that are struggling with mental illness to use that as a mitigator for what he did. There's so many people in this country that suffer from mental illness. They're not going out torturing and murdering people. You mentioned he's got brain damage? Really? Where's his brain damage? In what area? To say that is insulting to people that really suffer from brain damage. He walks. He talks. He can converse. He can hold a job. He's a better shot than most people. There's no brain damage here. And it's insulting to people that truly have it. He did it all. 
He held a job all by himself. This murder was well thought out, researched, planned, premeditated. He knew exactly what he was doing was wrong. He got enjoyment out of it and watching people suffer. He studied doing this for years, even long before she went, before she passed away. He wanted to do this. He wanted to kill people. This was an act of pure evil. Society tried for almost two decades to try to rehabilitate him. He had more mental health treatment than anyone. Henderson was at his house for hours a day. Hours a day. But he fell off the grid, right? They tried to get him off his pathway to violence, but nobody was successful. This wasn't somebody that fell off, that fell through the cracks and you know it or got lost in the system. They tried, but they could not change his determination to inflict pain upon everything that they touched, whether it was animals or human. He is a sociopath that does not deserve to live amongst us. This creature, that creature, has no redeemable value. And the other prisoners that you will encounter in your new life will inflict that pain upon you hopefully 17 times over again, until you're screaming for mercy, just like your victims. You mentioned that life in prison is punishment for him. He wanted life in prison from the beginning. How's that punishment? He's been fighting the prosecution and the families for the last five years because he doesn't want to die. He's scared to die. He had a well-thought-out strategy to wear his school ROTC shirt that day so he could escape with the rest of the kids running for their lives. Punishment is something the individual doesn't want. In prison, he gets to receive phone calls. Boxes of fan mail. He gets to fall in love and get married. He gets a tablet to email and text people. He gets to receive visitors. He gets to watch TV, read books, draw and write about killing again, and even get a college degree. How is that punishment? He has never had anyone punish him before. He received 77 disciplinary referrals just in middle school alone because he was a menace in the classroom and never had any consequences. How is giving him what he wants, again, punishment? It's not. It's ironic that the anniversary of your mother's death is the same day as my birthday. Today's my birthday. Just know, I want you to know, that every November 1st, I will be celebrating my birthday. While you are in prison, and every November 1st, I will be blowing out my birthday candles. And you know what my wish will be? That you suffer a painful, painful, violent death. Thank you, Judge.